Und hi, I'm Youssef and today I have special guest. So I, I let you introduce yourself. <laughs> Sure. Uh, hey, Yousef. Uh, my name's Zach. I'm a solution engineer at Anomalo, and my background's in data engineering. Amazing. Very short, concise. So can you tell me more about Anomalo? Uh, yeah, sure. So Anomalo is a data quality platform. Uh, so it's comprehensive. We use AI and machine learning to automatically detect anomalies in the data uh, and also automatically find the root cause. Uh, so it's meant to make that process a lot faster and a lot more scalable across an entire lake house. That's amazing. So I believe you just put some constraints and then uh, you have a job that run behind the scene to make sure that you have the data quality captured in a special way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I could actually walk you through some slides uh, on what that would look like. Amazing. Go ahead. All right, cool. So I, I'll just share this. Um, and this will be really quick, but for where Anomalo sits, first and foremost, is within the Databricks ecosystem, we could have lots of data issues coming from lots of different places. So all the way at the sources for what's coming into the lake, we could have lots of different data quality issues come up. We could also have those arise within the ETL area. So Databricks workflows, for example and all the way at the end of the pipeline. Uh, so those would be you know, coming from Tableau dashboards uh, or data science models. Uh, so where anomalous is in the stack is we want to catch all the anomalies at the lake house level. Uh, so we, we filter everything that's coming from upstream and prevent them from propagating downstream. Uh, and so anomaly would sit right here. Now, what does data quality monitoring look like? Uh, so to your question, Yusuf, there are a few different ways in which Anomalo is going to be monitoring data. Right? And so in a combination of all these ways, we can get a comprehensive approach. Uh, so first, you've probably heard the term data observability. Uh, so this is gonna be one very small part of an overall data quality monitoring strategy. Uh, so this is looking at pipelines, making sure data is coming in on time, it's fresh, the, the number of records are complete. Uh, perhaps lineage, uh, but we actually lean on Unity Catalog as well. Uh, but then we go into the actual data quality where we look at the data. And those would be validation rules, which are things like uh, making sure every record follows a rule. If I add column A to column B, it should always equal column C. Uh, and so this is getting really granular so we can catch those issues. But where this misses is it's really hard to maintain at scale. We can't have a rule for every issue in every column in every table. Uh, then we're, we're going to have thousands, hundreds of thousands even, that's going to be difficult to manage and create, and lots of false positive notifications. Uh, so then next, there's a way to look higher at aggregate levels. Uh, so these would be metrics, where we're tracking spikes in things like sums or averages. But we use time series models, and so this is the introduction of some machine learning to make sure we're only reporting on really significant issues like massive spikes or, or significant drops. Uh, and then finally, this one's a paradigm shift. This one's really new uh, that we don't really see anywhere else. Uh, and this is unsupervised modeling. Uh, and what unsupervised ML is doing is it's casting a wide net. There's no configuration needed. And I'll show an example of that in a bit. Just looking at the data to see if there was significant drift compared to historical data. Uh, so no configuration needed. Uh, this is going to be finding spikes and missing values, drops and segments of the data, uh, as well as value distribution shifts. Um, and so the one downside of this approach is it's not targeted. Uh, we're looking for significant shifts in columns across the table using sampling. Uh, so all four of these types of categories are what make Anomalo comprehensive. And these are going to be sitting on every table within your lake house. Uh, so one last part about a data quality monitoring strategy is detecting and alerting are a significant part of it, but the last part is resolving it. Uh, so when I was a data engineer, half my time was dedicated to resolving issues. Uh, so Anomalo is going to speed up that process by giving a root cause analysis automatically. So we, we, we don't have to tell Anomalo to look at anything specific. If it catches an issue, uh, like in this particular case, it caught uh, that if we multiply two columns together, it equals another column. Uh, but that wasn't the case for about 230 records. 
Uh, well, it generated root cause analysis and it's saying, okay, this is actually coming from New York records. And I could go into that a little bit. Uh, so th the last thing I'll mention on this is that anomalous for all data users. So similar to BI dashboards now, like back in the day we had, uh, you know, those nightmare dashboards like Bob J, Crystal Reports, uh, and those are all managed by enterprise and infrastructure. Um, so it was really difficult for people to get new visualizations. Uh, along come new newer tools like Tableau, Power BI, Looker, and all of a sudden that puts power into the hands of users uh, or all data users to be able to create their own visual analytics and their own reports. Uh, so Anomalo is tackling this in the same way, uh, but of course in a governed way. So enterprise can control around this, but this could be engineers, data engineers, data platform, uh, data scientists, anyone working machine learning, uh, as well as the consumers uh, all the way downstream. Uh, we, we see analysts as well as product owners um, using Anomalo to either view results or create their own checks. Uh, so that's a, a basic overview. Uh, and I, I have a short demo prepared that I could hop into, but uh, any anything else, uh, any questions at a high level that you have? No, but to be honest, I'm amazed. Increasing <laughs> productivity, simple to use. I mean, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's pretty cool. I, I wish I, I had this tool when I was a data engineer, uh, you know, especially when I was in finance. Uh, this could have saved me a lot of headaches and from getting in trouble a few times. Um, so I, I guess I could just go directly into a demo. Yeah. I want to start in Databricks just to show you how Anomalo could integrate. So in Unity Catalog, there's going to be information on our different tables and you know lineage. Anomalo is actually going to surface the data quality issues it found directly into Unity. Uh, so it's saying, okay, Anomalous monitoring this table, and I can see that there are a few different categories of checks. Uh, most categories pass, but key metrics and validation rules fail. Uh, so as a user, that might concern me. Uh, so I could hop directly into Anomalous to see those results. Um, and Anomalous will display all those different checks and the ones that failed here. Now, before I go into these checks at a high level, I want to take a look together at how we would connect to Anomalous. So this is the first page I'd be seeing if I log into Anama, and this is the tables page. What I'll be getting here is a list of all my tables and views in Databricks or whatever connected data source. Uh, so if this is the first time someone logs in, of course, they wouldn't be seeing any tables or views here. Uh, you know, I, if it's the first time anyone in a company logged in. So what I would want to do is connect to a data source. And I care about Databricks here. So from here, I just give... Anomalo Databricks service account credentials and whatever permissions that that account has, it will automatically pull in a list of all those tables and views right here. Um, so as soon as it does, we just select the ones we want to monitor, uh, basic configuration, and Anomalo is going to automatically start monitoring those tables. So uh, what does monitoring data look like? Uh, now, again, there are going to be those two overarching categories, observability, which is a really small part of an overall monitoring strategy, uh, just in, in pipelines, for example. Uh, and then there's that deeper data quality. Uh, before we hop into those, I just want to take a look at these visualizations down here. Uh, what Anomaly is giving me here uh, is a profile of my data. So I get a list of all my columns and within these columns, a distribution of the records. So for example, this is credit card transaction data. And uh, if I'm a credit card company, I can see as a user in my merchant category column, that is pretty common for customer transactions to be related to online retail, like Amazon, as well as food, um, such as groceries or restaurants. Uh, so across thousands of tables, I won't be an expert in all of them. This will help me get oriented around it. So let's go into the different checks. What does monitoring my data look like? Uh, you know, Briefly, I'll touch on this. This is looking to make sure uh, the metadata is representing that the table is there, columns haven't been dropped, uh, the table's being updated consistently. And then we got that deeper data quality section, which we're making sure that uh, the actual data itself is arriving on time, not just that the table is updated and the data is complete. Uh, so what Anama is doing here, and again, this is completely automatic, is it's gonna generate a time series model to make sure that the number of records that's coming in on any given day is what it should be expected to be. Uh, but a few months ago, I could see there was an anomaly. 
One thing you're probably noticing is there's a degree of seasonality in this data. So on weekends, uh, we can see that there's significant drops. Uh, I mean, that's significant. That's normal behavior, uh, fewer transactions. So Anomaly is going to note that seasonality. It's going to use things like day of the month, time of the year, even U.S. holidays. Uh, and it's going to adjust those models to make sure it's not generating false positive alerts uh, to catch the significant ones and suppress noise. If I'm an end user and I'm getting notifications, which Anomal can send through Slack, Teams, PaterDuty, uh, some other channels, uh, I don't want to be getting a lot of noise. Otherwise, that's when I check out. And at that point, it's like I don't have a data quality tool at all. So uh, that unsupervised machine learning model uh, that I was mentioning earlier, this is automatic. We, we don't configure anything. And it's looking across every single column uh, dynamically to see if there was a spike in nulls, empty strings, zeros, or drops in segments. Uh, so this is a dynamic threshold set on every column. So one column, it might be significant to have 5% nulls. That's abnormal, so it would report on that one. Another column, that's not a big deal, but 75% nulls would be a big deal. Um, so drop in segment records is a special one where... If I go to my run history, I'm going to filter down to a fail check in the past. So Anomaly will log all previous runs. And here, what Anomaly is showing me, I'll just come down to this bottom visualization, is in one particular column, the merchant category code column we were just looking at, it's detailing out all the different segments. Uh, so for example, there's that online retail and food. And we can see that the prediction intervals, which are represented by green, that's what Anomaly is expecting based on the machine learning it's done. Uh, now, there are two segments in this data set for this one column that had significant drops in the number of records. Uh, so we could see fast food and fuel. And if I double click into fast food, I can see that after doing the sampling, the unsupervised modeling, Anomaly wants to make extra sure that this really is a significant anomaly. And it generated a time series model on this segment. And it's showing that there was a significant drop yesterday. We're predicted to be somewhere around 1,000 records, but there are only 16 records that came in. So I can't emphasize enough, and this is a completely different way of doing data quality monitoring. I can't emphasize enough that these are completely automatic across every single column and the segments. Uh, on the, these are looking for value distribution shifts and to make sure that previously unique columns don't have duplicate records. Uh, the last thing I'll show, is key metrics and validation rules. So everything we've gone through so far is completely automatic. I, I mean, that's amazing. I, between all these visualizations and all these checks, we're getting really good coverage out of the box, but there's still going to be a time and place for targeted checks. So let's say I care about the average transaction amount. You know, I could be an analyst. And, you know, I was talking earlier about self-service. So self-service, I need to, this to be as easy as possible. And Anomalo has a library of over 100 out-of-the-box checks. Um, so really extensive. Uh, most of them are completely no code. So if I look for my average, I would just select my column mean check. And from here, I care about my transaction amount. So I would just save and run. And what that looks like, I created this right before. Anomalous tracking that average, it generates a time series model and it detected an anomaly. So I would have received an alert. I could see there was a massive spike in the average. That's a significant issue. Um, so this is going to be in a few clicks, users can self-service. Uh, so an analyst, if they care about a certain metric where they have to report to their VP every week, we need to make sure that's right. Uh, so I, that analyst would want to create their own monitoring metric. Uh, so finally, validation rules, that last piece for the critical data elements. We want to make sure every single value is following business logic. Uh, so I set up a null check earlier. Uh, and again, this is no code, same no code library to make sure every single value in a column is null, not just a significant spike. And Anomalo found that 5% of the data in this column was null. Uh, and if I scroll down, Anomalo will give me some sample bad records, some sample good records, and I can even expose the SQL to copy and paste this into Databricks and retrieve those bad records. Um, so I, I, I could grab all this. Uh, and what's more, Anomaly has an API and a Python SDK to use anything that's in Anomaly through that API. So for example, if we have a, a Databricks workflow and we have a bronze layer, uh, a silver layer, and 
right before we publish it up to our gold layer, we want to run anomaly checks on the server layer. So we can say, okay, anomaly run your checks. If things work, we pass it on to the gold layer. If not, then we could pause that process, grab the SQL statement automatically and quarantine those records out. And not only that, when I click into that link, when a, a uh, when an issue is found, Anomalo will show me this automated root cause analysis. So this is completely automatic. I didn't ask Anomalo to do anything. And what it found here was for these null records, there was a significant spike. Uh, in I mean, the, those null records are coming from rideshare transactions, which are split between Lyft and Uber. Um, so in summary, Anomalo is going to be one first automatically giving you coverage from a data quality and table observability perspective uh, with unsupervised modeling, with um, you know data volume, data freshness, and then gives users that self-service capability. Uh, and then finally, it's going to be alerting and giving that root cause analysis. Um, so that's all I wanted to show. Uh, but I, I want to emphasize that this is going to be um, displaying within Unity Catalog as well uh, for that tight integration. I mean, I'm amazed. I mean, it's simple and it doesn't require coding. So I believe everyone should be able to use it. And this, and to be honest, this last piece, you show me like how you're able to write the SQL code that I can copy paste and bring again to, to Databricks to run, I don't know, a query to get this code, get this the data, put it, send it back in the quarantine in order to fix the issue and then send it back again to be analyzed and then push it. It's really a simple way to monitor data and make sure that nothing messes up with the dashboard that's gonna be brought to the C levels or the uh, head of, I don't know, company. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm super glad this is resonating with Yusuf. Uh, and I, I, I can't emphasize enough that this, you know, now with all these LLMs and AI for doing analytics, uh, all of a sudden we're broadening the data that we could use. There's a lot more data that we could use with AI. And because of that, it's more important than ever to make sure that that data quality is going to be good everywhere. Uh, and if we're not familiar with that new data we're going to be using, then we need a degree of automation that isn't just looking to make sure that new data is arriving and it's complete. Uh, we need automation to detect if there's significant shifts. Um, and so that unsupervised modeling uh, is a way to do that. Um, so, yeah, really appreciate your time, Yusuf, with that. And you got my attention, but next question. Hmm. What if I want to try Anomalo? Is there a trial period or how does oh, it Oh, yeah. <laughs> how could I forget the most important part? Yeah, so we, we offer free POCs. Um, so feel free to reach out to us. Uh, one thing to note is we are directly within Partner Connect. Uh, so if you head over to Partner Connect, uh, there's going to be the, this big anomalous symbol right here. Uh, click it, and then you can get a free trial. Um, so that it's just a couple tables. What, what I'd recommend is reaching out to us as well, uh, because we could do a more involved one uh, where we can uh, enable a lot more tables. Uh, but if you want to give it a few clicks, uh, go right into Partner Connect. Amazing. So I'll make sure to add the links. Uh, in the description of the video. And in case when I reach out, I will add all the Anomalous documentation below. And I will also add the contact of Zachary. Awesome. All right. Well, I, I, I really appreciate it, Yusuf. Uh, thanks for all your time. Thank you. Thank you for being my guest. And bye. Bye.